This is a video clip for the AEDT 1120U Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies, a course offered by University of Ontario Institute of Technology. The title for this particular video clip is Software Suite Development, the Search for the Killer App. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what is the killer app concept? Why does this concept seem to be the focus of software development? Number two, what is the relationship between the historical development of personal computers and the rise of office suites? How are these related? Number three, what is YCWIG and why is it an important concept? Number four, what is the relationship between increased reliance on the internet and the need for increasingly sophisticated security tools? One of the driving forces spurring the development of personal computers seems to be the search for the so-called killer app or a computer program that is deemed to be so necessary or is so commercially successful that it justifies the purchase of a personal computer or a device. According to Wikipedia, this implies that consumers would buy the expensive hardware just to run the app, that application, having a significant effect on the sales of the platform, and that's taken from the killer application page of wikipedia.org. VisiCalc, as uh, displayed on the slide that you see, was originally offered as the first computer program available for the Apple II. It caused the computer to be very successful and according to Wikipedia, again, it propelled the Apple from being a hobbyist toy to a useful tool for business, unquote. And that's taken from the VisiCalc page of wikipedia.org. The software allowed calculations to be run automatically and also allowed for what-if scenarios or hypotheses to be tested. When the IBM PC was developed, Microsoft stepped in to create a derivative of SEcalc that would run on the DOS operating platform. The program was called Multiplan and was originally marketed from in 1982. Multiplan operated in ways that were very similar to VisiCalc. Uh, competition from another program, Lotus 1-2-3, uh, later on proved too much and Microsoft program lost popularity. Microsoft withdrew Multiplan and began producing another spreadsheet program, Excel, in 1985, specifically to run on Apple's Macintosh system. Microsoft eventually ported this latest program in 1987 to Windows. Lotus was slow to bring 1-2-3 to Windows and this gave Microsoft Spreadsheet a chance to take over the leading position. Spreadsheet provided an impetus to show that the GUI-based operating system was a solid contender for the imagination of computer users. Office suites were created in order to offer a wide variety of software tools with a reduction in cost. Typically, most office suites contain a word processor, a spreadsheet, and a presentation program. Some may include a variety of other programs, sometimes including a database, a graphics suite, desktop publishing software, formula editor, diagramming software, an email client, communication software, personal information manager, note-taking programs, groupware, project manage management software, and or web log analysis software. The first office suite was AppleWorks or ClarisWorks, depending upon the timeline that you're looking at. This was a totally integrated program package rather than a collection of programs and it was available for Apple computers. AppleWorks was discontinued in 2007 when the iWorks suite was offered. IBM offered an office suite called IBM Works originally. The suite was made available specifically for the IM OS 2 operating system. Microsoft's original office suite was called Microsoft Works, which was designed for Apple's Mac Macintosh. The suite was discontinued in 2008. Microsoft also developed and continues to offer consecutive versions of their own Office Suite for both Windows and the Mac OS X uh, operating systems. Originally, the suite included versions of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. The included applications have become increasingly integrated over time. And while the suite is used by an estimated 1 billion people, this does not qualify it as a killer app. Other notable versions of Office Suites are available from Corel, Corporation in the form of WordPerfect Office. Version X6 of this suite includes WordPerfect, a formerly dominant word processor. Quattro Pro, a spreadsheet tool, is very similar to Excel in the earlier Multiplan and the earlier VisiCalc. 
um, presentations, a software tool that is similar in some ways to PowerPoint and a variety of other tools. Also, Apache OpenOffice, recently spun off from Oracle Corporation and now available from OpenOffice.org, offers a free open source alternative to the other proprietary suites. Another consideration for killer app status might be one of the number of programs that deal with the incorporation and or manipulation of graphics in a digital context. The first program that comes to mind was released by 1985 by Aldis Corporation. The PageMaker application was originally designed for use on the Apple Macintosh and was then ported to the Windows environment in 1987. For several years, this program almost single-handedly defined the desktop publishing concept. The program not only allowed graphics to be displayed on the same screen or page as text, it also provided support for changing fonts and, and their characteristics. Finally, there was support for YCWIG functionality when the page was sent to the printer, i.e. desktop publishing. Um, by the way, the printer output was not true YCWIG, but it was closer than ever before. Uh, Aldis Corporation merged with Adobe, uh, Adobe Systems in 1994, and until 2004, Adobe PageMaker was supported by Adobe Corporation. Um, the availability of desktop publishing software was at least partially responsible for the love of the Macintosh system by artists as compared to the more business-like compatibility of the PC. A company called Macromedia, 1992 to 2005, produced a series of products such as Flash, an important program which provides multimedia in the form of animation, video, and interactivity support to web pages, and Dreamweaver, a program that is used for the design of static and dynamic web pages. Macromedia was acquired by Adobe Systems towards the end of 19, uh, 2005. It's interesting to note that Flash, which, which has been an important element of web pages um, that require interactivity, was deliberately excluded from the iOS support for iPads by Apple. Consequently, there are a number of sites that rely on Flash which cannot be viewed on iPads. In fact, there has been a bit of reflection as a result of this and other um, improvements on the reliance of Flash across the computer industry and Adobe has indicated that Flash will not be used for mobile device platforms and instead suggests a refocus on the use of HTML5, the latest version of HTML, as a means of incorporating interactivity into web pages. This brings us to another uh, set of programs that have been highly influential in moving people to the use of computers for graphical purposes. I'm referring to the combination of Photoshop and or Illustrator um, along with a wide variety of other software programs that can be found bundled together as the Adobe Creative Suite. Taken together, the suite offers a collection of graphic design, video editing, and web publishing programs. Flash and Dreamweaver have been incorporated into the suite since the acquisition of Macromedia in 2005. Illustrator and competitors such as CorelDRAW have been used by graphic design artists to produce high-end graphics to be used in a wide variety of professions including broadcasting, advertising, and publishing. Photoshop is an interesting case as it was originally adopted by professional photographers as a means to touch up and enhance graphics that were inputted from scanned photographs. However, since the digital photography re revolution occurred, it is just as likely that everyday people will use some version of the software to work with their own pics or pictures shot with their DSLR camera or the camera that's found on their cell phone or on their mobile device of some kind. Photoshop might be considered a killer app, not because it justified the purchase of a personal computer, but because it provided a way to enhance pictures taken with newly available digital photography equipment and therefore justifies the purchase of the equipment. More on the PC side of the divide, as compared to the Apple Mac side, there has always been a need for a multitude of utility programs uh, when the computers were standalone and with the rise of the internet and networking for security programs that insulate individual machines from the var wide variety of malware that seems to be waiting to pounce around every corner. Utilities were and are needed for everything from memory management, hard disk management, diagnostics, repair and recovery and optimization. Some of these utilities have been incorporated into the operating systems. Programs such as hard disk defragmentation uh, routines can be found in recent versions of Windows. 
In fact, Microsoft has incorporated versions of malware checkers such as Defender directly into the operating system as well. However, external virus programs such as Norton or Symantec antivirus are still needed to defend against the myriads of Trojan viruses and worms that are released to the internet on a regular basis. All of these programs cannot be considered to be killer apps, except perhaps through the application of a reverse definition. That is, they need, they themselves, that is the programs need to be purchased and installed to ensure safe and productive use of the personal computer. In turn, the need for these types of programs have spurred the growth of additional programming companies that focus on these types of tools. Some of these have been listed on the slide that is displayed. While they cannot be viewed as killer apps in and of themselves, internet browsers are an interesting and important class of software which is not only required for use on personal computers, but are increasingly important for smartphones and other mobile devices. The earliest browser was conceived of and designed by Neil Larson in 1984 when he produced DOS MacSync and DOS Houdini, which allowed hypertexting links between files. Tim Berners-Lee, the father of the internet, used a NEXT, that is um, a Steve Jobs' um, next computer uh, machine, as a web server and a browser in 1990. And in 1993, NCSA, which is the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, produced Mosaic, a web browser which led to the adoption of the World Wide Web by the general public. The Mosaic browser led in itself to the formation of Netscape Corporation, uh, Communications Corporation and the Navigator browser in 1994. The Netscape browser, however, did not fare well in competition against Microsoft's browser, and eventually Netscape allowed the source code to become available as open source software. This allowed for the creation of the Mozilla project and Firefox is descended then directly from Navigator. Microsoft's Internet Explorer, or IE, in 1995 was originally purchased from Spy Spyglass Incorporated, another small software development firm. In some important ways, IE is different from most other browsers due to the way it was tightly in implemented within the Windows operating system, requiring the use of IE to control network connections, etc. This led to several legal disputes that have resulted in more openness regarding which browsers can and should be used. A wide variety of browsers are available for use, many across the several platforms, and many of these have been listed um, on the screen, uh, on the slide that you see in front of you. They include Firefox, Camino, Google Chrome, um, OmniWeb, Opera, Safari, and Conqueror. Moving forwards, it, it is clear that internet browsers, particularly those that support HTML5 and ca cascading style sheets, or CSS, will be important in allowing users to network and connect to information, ideas, and people. There is no theory page for this particular um, video clip and we'll go directly then to the synthesis questions. And the synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, to what extent does the killer app concept have any applicability for the latter portion of the personal computer era and why? Number two, why does the ability to create what-if scenarios and graphs come uh, in spreadsheets cause these apps to have great applicability to learning? Number three, are there any advantages to using one office suite over another? And why might these advantages be important for teaching and learning contexts? And number four, graphics programs for static and video editing are very important for problem-based learning contexts. Why might this be? And this brings us to the end of this video.